The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the February 9th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstances of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. Uh, even more important than that, though, it's during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to give us a call at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send that early. Send it off to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. See a mixed bag out there. You got the Dow trade down 72 points. The S&P's up 17. NASDAQ 142. Russell's up 12. Some guys are up 74. Trend is off 50. New York Stock Exchange is off 20 points. You got gold off 13 bucks. Silver's down 20 cents. Light to be crude is up 30 pennies. Natural gas off 7 cents. The 30-year Treasury printed out 119.18. That's four ticks to the downside. Our leaders in the clubhouse to the upside. Micro strategy, 42 bucks, 7%. Super microcomputer, 40 bucks, 5.7%. Masonite International, 33 bucks, 34%. Lamb Research, 26 bucks, 3%. We've got some movers. We also have some shakers. Booking Holdings off 139. Expedia down 28. Mettler Toledo 29. Take two down 13. And Owings Corning off 11. So we got movers and shakers. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. Let's begin. Well, let's begin taking a look at the equity futures. Let's go ahead and switch panels out here. If you give me a moment, we'll do that. We'll get over to the white background charts. We'll start off by taking a look at the daily equity future contracts. What do we know? We know in the case of the ES Mini, there's no top in place out here. There is a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal that would require a bearish reversal candle to confirm a top. We would then need to at least see a close below that oscillator and change line, currently printed 5,008, in order to suggest that there's maybe some downside movement to the next level of support, which will be down at 49.39. We can see that today is likely going to form bar number seven of a TD9 count. That says that between Monday and Wednesday of next week, this could still has to complete the pattern, but this could be a short-term top that would form out there. In the case of the NQ, it's a day behind the ES Mini. It's only going to form bar number six. So the TD9 counts, we really need to kind of wait until probably Tuesday, Wednesday of next week, but we'll continue to monitor those each day. It also has a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal. A bearish reversal candle would signal a attempt at a top. Price would still also have to close below. It's also change on at 17,870. And then price might pull back towards 17,572 or 17,683. That is not the pattern that's in play as we speak right now. Just giving you the parameters to the upside, to the downside, although to the upside, right now it's somewhat unlimited, but we can take a look at that as well. The Dow Equity Future Contract, that's a little booger. It still has a Rhodes Mintum indicator top, but not because today's candle looks like it could be a shooting star. It's because it formed a bear sash candle back on the trading day of February the 5th. That then that sets up the resistance as the high of those candles. Well, that high was the prior day on the second, and that's at 38.892. That's why price must close above to negate that signal. Does it matter that we have potentially two uh, signals out here? No, it does not. It still has a top. Now that top would get negated when they close above. Uh, the high, I'm uh, looking at the Dow Equity Future Contract, the high that it needs to close above is at 38,892 level out there. We can see that price right now is below its green oscillator and change line. So it's the weakest of the four equity future contracts that we take a look at. 
So the Dow could be signaling its intent to move back towards that 38050 level. That's the top of its current profile. In the case of the Russell 2000, the Russell 2000 trading right now above a green oscillator change line. That tells us we have a rising price oscillator above zero. Those are bullish conditions. The next level of resistance for it is 2830. And if price were to close above 2830, really needs a little bit more, more than that. It really needs to close above 2025.50. If you got that close, you would trigger an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. It's not what we have right now. Conditions inside the Russell 2000 are bullish consolidation oriented. All out bullish breakout mode inside the ES and the NQ. And they're somewhat neutral uh, inside the Dow simply because price is still trading above the top of that daily profile. So that's what's going on there. There was a request that came in. So I wanted to get to this. This individual that uh, asked the question, they said they're in a day trade inside the NQ. And they wanted to exit. And they're asking where is it? Where should they exit? So we take a look at these intraday charts out here for the NQ. We'll just start from upper left and go all the way down to the lower right. We'll skip the daily. We've already covered that. We can see on a five-hour time frame chart, all-out bullish breakout mode. Price above green oscillator change line. Price above um, the top of its profile. Only bar number six that is present. I do see a wave number seven signal. I'd have to really go study that to see if that's truly in play. Let's not spend time on that as we speak right now. Basil just finished his show. He's likely covered some of those things. The four-hour time frame chart, bar number seven, full breakout mode. Again, conditions, price above all resistance, top of its profile, and its green oscillator and change line. Same conditions for the 120-minute chart, only bar number six. Kind of getting the picture here. No topping signal along the uh, top line set of charts out there. The 60-minute time frame chart, no topping signal there, nor on the 30, nor on the 15. And on the 10-minute chart, you are going to go ahead and confirm a TD9 count top at 1120. You are likely to. Price would really have to pull back um, in order to, in this next um, seven minutes, in order to negate that signal. Now, that says at 1140 that the TD9 count top will complete. So you could take a look at that. You're trying to get out. You're trying to identify a place where you could get out on a short-term basis. The other charts say that they likely want to move higher, but you're looking for the most conservative approach. So what I would do, knowing that the 10-minute time frame chart is in bar number eight as we speak, what I would be looking for, and I'll just switch down to a five-minute chart for you. If we switch down to a five-minute chart, what we don't see out here is any kind of a topping signal. What we do see, if we start from the rally, so I didn't, you didn't indicate what time you got in, but it was a day trade, you said, so I'm assuming you got in sometime this morning. And if we take a look at coming off of that low out here, this is, again, a five-minute chart from 940 this morning. What we can see here, each bar, we do not see a close below the low of a prior bar. Period, period, period. To me, if you're asking me, and you're looking for maybe the first signal that there could be some kind of indication that the market wants to move lower, maybe it's not a five-minute chart. This is the only chart that I've studied. Just pulled, really just kind of pulled it up. Was just trying to really answer your question out there. And, uh, and so I'd have to say that that might be the first thing that I would do, knowing that the 10-minute time frame chart has that uh, TD9 count pattern that's likely to form at 1120, complete at 11.30. I might have said 11.30 and 11.40, so 11.20 and 11.30 out there. Uh, if you don't get a close below the prior bar, the five-minute time frame chart for the NQ, it's certainly not telling us that it wants to head lower. Steve Rhodes with TFN. Hope that helps you out. Right If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. So we're taking the battle right now between the NQ, trading higher. It looks like it wants to continue to trade higher. Uh, just that very short-term uh, potential topping signal in the 10-minute time frame chart. And the Dow suggesting it wants to move lower out there. So we've already covered the daily time frame. We're looking at the Dow equity future contract. It looks like you're going to have a confirmed uh, Roach Mintum indicator top on the five-hour time frame chart. Although this candle doesn't close that too, but right now you've got the bearish reversal candle. Uh, you've got price trading below profile support. The real key level of profile support that I'd be watching for the Dow Equity Future contract really comes from the 120-minute time frame chart, and that's because price is sitting at support. So what the Dow Equity Future contract did, it has now completed its A to B equals C D pattern. Actually completed it right here. That was back at 1600 hours. That was back on the um, where was that? 1600 hours on February the second. Uh, then we've got another one that uh, firm. Here's a key reversal bar that just confirmed at uh, 10 a.m. out there. So watch support. Now, this, this bar that we're currently in doesn't close until 12 noon. Okay, so you got 12 noon, then 2. So the level to be watching is 38,715. A close below 38,715 is going to suggest that the Dow Equity Future contract wants to trade lower. Now, I've got on the 120 minute chart, price at support. On the 15 and the 10 minute chart, uh, price forming TD nine count bottoms. What that says is that also a close below. This is intraday wise now. Thirty eight seven oh eight is going to suggest lower price out there. So you've really got two time frames, three time frames to watch and observe. Um, that's going to be the two hour time frame chart for the Dow Equity Future contract, the ten and the fifteen minute time frame, just to assist you on market direction, at least for those two instruments out there. All righty. So let's do this. We just have a few questions that have come in. So let's not get behind on those and would love to have many more. So, again, Steve at TFNN.com, 877-927-6648 or uh, any ping inside the uh, Tiger's Den. The first question coming in from Phil inside that Tiger's Den wants to take a look at Toyota Motor. And we take a look at Toyota Motor. Toyota is going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count top today. That TD9 count top. Also, what the T9 count top should do is take price back to support. Well, this is a bearish structured profile that is forming right now. And that says that the next level of support to the downside, Phil, is 220.98. If price closed below 220.98, the next level would be that green oscillator and change line. That's going to change, but it's currently printed at 214 and change out there. Below that, 
would suggest 210.13. I'm going to suggest that if price closed below 221, we're likely to see that 210.13 level because then that's a bear structure daily profile with a TD9 count top, and sellers should be able to push price back to that level of support out there. So you were looking for a potential three drive to a top out there, and it was inside the Tiger's Den. And what I was just indicating um, to Phil, and I just want to be able to share that with everybody, because it's something to really consider. Toyota Motor, uh, you see a lot of gaps out here. These gaps are meaningless. The reason that Toyota Motor has gaps is because of the Japanese yen currency conversion that's going in place. If you really wanted to either be long or short Toyota Motor, go get uh, a, a exchange data from the Nikkei, in my opinion. Take a look at how the stock chart is performing there and the stock part patterns. They would work on this system. I just don't have access to the, don't want to pay the exchange fee and everything that goes along with it. Just don't need 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 to do that. But but that's what I would really do if you really want to, really, if, if Toyota Motor really becomes an area of focus for you, you should want to be able to access that. But you do have that topping pattern on the daily time frame. The weekly time frame is in wave number seven. Of course, that needs a lower high to confirm. The earliest that could take place would be next Friday. The monthly chart is going to go ahead and confirm a TD9 count top at the end of February, but it could complete that pattern in March out there. So right now, I'm going to go with this. Looks like it's a short-term-ish type top out here uh, with price uh, first pulling back to the 220.98 level out there. So that was the first request from Phil, but he had a double. He wanted a double play, and that double play said, please take a look at instrument OMCL. So that's what we've got up on our screen right now, and OMCL is uh, going to form bar number nine. Oh, Mr. Phil, he's a TD9 guy, and it apparently, and uh, um, and today's going to become bar number nine. That says that uh, Omnicell should or could form a bottom between today and Monday out there. Now, this is kind of a widest ranging bar out here, uh, so I'm going to go with today is not likely the day. So you'd want to come back, and maybe we can do that together. Maybe if you remind me on Monday, uh, we can come back and we can take a look at Omnicell, because what we want to do at that time is take a look and see if there's some type of intraday signal. For example, this is the 120-minute time frame chart. There is no signal there. Let me just go back to a 30-minute, uh, kind of the default time frame out here. So on the 30-minute time frame chart, you can see it has a roach momentum indicator signal and that it needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm that. But what we can also see out here is that that red oscillator and change line is still a key resistance out here for Omnicell. So I think it's more likely going to be more of a Monday potential bottom than a Friday potential bottom out here. The weekly chart looks horrible. It's negating a TD9 count uh, bottom as we speak right now. That TD9 count bottom formed out here back in November. And on the monthly time frame chart, of course, it's early in the month out there, but it closed below the uh, November low out here. That November low, 2023, is at 2872. If you close below that, you negate its Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom out there. So with regard to Omnicell, I'd say come back to it on uh, Monday, Tuesday of next week. Let's see what's going on there. And I hope that that helped answer all of your questions. Let's go uh, check in on that soybean trade out there. Let's go see what's going on with soybeans out here. Now, this is a two-sided uh, version of a trade out here. And what I mean by that is, the first, the active contract is March. If we take a look at March right now, that'll pop up on your screen. March does have a TD9 count bottom pattern out there. Only a close below that low, and that low is 1189, would that pattern get negated? On a weekly time frame chart for March, this is somewhat problematic because a close below the low of last week, which was 1186.75, negates its TD9 count bottom. And that says we should be prepared for lower price. Now, I've got the March contract up here. Uh, we probably have to get the continuous up to really get a, a feel for where that next level might be. But right now, I'm just going to go with the lows from May of 2023 out, th out there right now, which shows up as a swing low when I take a look at this contract out here. So the daily time frame still has that bullish uh, TD9 count bottom. But man, that weekly chart is saying, just be careful out there. Now, let's go switch over and take a look at the November soybeans contract as well as the other two that make up SOYB. And uh, again, I would have ch I would have uh, chosen SOY, something other than B out there, you know, because it sounds like I'm saying SOB. So why would they do that out there? I know because it goes with soy. I said, just get rid of the B. So if we take a look at SOYB, though, that instrument contains these three future contracts for soybeans. 
That's the May 2024 contract. We were looking at March. That's the July 2024 contract, and it is the November 2024 contract. Where we were looking at a TD9 count bottom pattern inside of March, we don't have that pattern inside any of these three contracts. The only thing that we have here are Roadsman indicator bottom patterns, and they need, it probably does mean for beans, but you know what I mean, Bill, and you're sitting there during a, during a show, and you're saying to somebody, SOI, it doesn't sound right out there. I'm just saying, sometimes maybe they want to think that one through. Of course, they weren't really thinking that people would be using it for a show, I suppose. But in any event out here, the July, the May, and the November soybean contracts do not have out of the patterns on them, even though SY, SOYB does. So we're going to continue to monitor this trade. Why? Because we're about to, or we are, in a very favorable seasonal time frame cycle. And soybeans have had the schnocker kick out of them. So we would like to be able to find a bottom. We're going to try to do that together as a team. That's you and me. Steve Rhodes with TFN. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, you know, you're going to hear blabbering. Maybe I've already seen some of it to start out here. Uh, talking about how, uh, you know, five stocks are making up 60-some-odd uh, percent or what have you of the move inside the S&P 500. And what they're trying to do, I suppose, is make us believe that the other stocks aren't participating inside the rally. I'm here to tell you that the stock charts tell you there's nothing that could be more false than that statement. 
I don't understand why they should be so misleading out there. What, what the hell do they have going on that they need to be that misleading? And how do we know that? If we take a look at the equal weighted ETF for the Qs as an example, that's called QQEW, it formed a new all-time high already this morning. Same thing that we've done inside of the Qs out there. So to suggest that there's no participation in the markets out here by any of the other instruments is just absolute bogus, false, unreliable information out there. That doesn't mean we don't take our signals and information from these uh, uh, equal weighted ETFs because we do out here. In the case of the uh, RSP, that's the equal weight for the S&P 500. Made a new all-time high just a few days ago. But right now, if it did form a bearish reversal candle today, right now it's a bearish sash, that would generate a uh, topping condition. That would suggest that price would pull back to support, which is between 156.10 and 157.38. The same can be said with regard to the uh, Dow. It has a um, bearish uh, roads indicator top that would be negated with a close above 3341 out there but the idea that people want to put into our head that the rest of the stocks are not participating in this rally is just absolute horse manure out there because that's not what the charts are telling you and i so i simply wanted to make sure that we pass that along to you and we certainly want to keep keep our eye on that global flow of capital as we've hit new all-time highs today in all those other major currencies out there. Let's go back to a couple of requests that have come in, and then I can go on to a soapbox after that. And this uh, next request coming in from uh, Joe D. inside the Tiger's Den wants to take a look at ticker symbol CLSK out here. We take a look at CLSK. It's traded right up into resistance, so it gapped up into resistance this morning, Joe, and that was the TD9 count breakdown level. That was at 1347. Now, as price is moving into the swing point, let me just open this up, make sure I grab the right swing point out here. That would actually be this swing point from the trading day of December the 27th. The volume out there was 27 million shares. So far today, you've done 39 million shares. As long as price closes inside this bar, and what I mean by that is above 1224, that is going to suggest at least a run for the high. Has it hit the high? Let me see the high out there. I don't know if it hit it or not, but we're going to go check that high 1356 today 1360 yeah it's already hit it but if you close back inside there with volume it should go at least tag that level again out there um so the daily chart looks good it's just that you're up at resistance area so it's pushing with volume on a weekly time frame the weekly time frame has to close above doesn't look like it will do it this week but it has to close above the week of december 29th we were looking at that basically on the daily time frame and it would be a close above 1356 that would negate the td9 count top now when you get a TD9 on top, it's supposed to take price back to support. In fact, it did that. That was the bottom of its profile at 690. So that test is over. Uh, price is trading into a swing point that has volume out here. This is the swing point from December 29th on a weekly basis, 111 million shares. This week, you're moving up into it with 137. What does that tell us? That tells us the weekly and the daily are generating the same signal that we should see price back up at those highs out there. But you got to deal with that breakdown resistance level, Joe. That, again, is at 1347. If price can close above that, your next area of resistance would be 17 bucks and then 1848. So that's what I see when I take a look at Clean Spark Inc. out there. I hope that that helps you out. And as always, thanks so much for the request. Sandy wrote in, and Sandy wanted to take a look at Energy Transfer. ET is the uh, ticker symbol out there, and her question specifically is higher or lower. So to answer that question... Let's go see what kind of patterns we have out here. So when this formed a high, I see a wave number seven top. That's letter G. So that qualifies at a very small portion of the uh, Chapman wave out there. But we do have that top. Price then closed below the bottom of its profile. That was back on the uh, sixth out here. So that was this week. That was on what, Monday, Tuesday. One. That was on Tuesday of this week. Price gaps down. There's a new profile that is forming right now. And here is a bullish structured profile. Price is testing that bullish structured zone area. So Sandy, you're going to be able to answer this question, not me. Mr. Marco will answer this question. That is, this new profile has support in the 1388, 1396 level. And it doesn't necessarily matter where it's trading right now at 1135. But if price closed below 1388, you'll close below a bear structured profile, that a top of wave number seven pattern out here. And that's going to suggest lower price out there. Now, it's not like today would be at the C point of an A to B equals C. We haven't had enough of a retracement out there. If price, on the other hand, uh, can close above 1396, it doesn't have to be today, it just has to be as long as price doesn't close below the bottom of that profile, if price can close above 1396, the answer to your question of higher or lower would be higher. 
And the reason is because that is a bullish structured profile. And if you price can close above the center of a bullish structured profile, remember the center you have both buyers and sellers. Let's assume it's 50-50. At the bottom you have 100% sellers. So now you got 150% of the, I'm sorry, 100% buyers. Now you have 150% buyers that should be able to push price up again to resistance. That would be the top of that profile. So we don't have the answer. I don't have that answer for you. The market has that answer. The cool thing is this new profile form today. So you've got the information right now, fresh, right off the press out there. And you'll be able to answer that question at day's end out there. Do I see anything else on this uh, stock chart? Well, a couple of days ago, we traded a bit lower. We had 16 million shares on that day. So far today, we're 2.8. So price is sort of pushing lower, but doing it with lighter volume out there. I would expect or anticipate that the bottom of that support level will hold. It's not a guarantee. It's just that I would anticipate that that's the likely outcome. On a weekly basis, price is consolidating with inside its profile. 1331, I'm sorry, 1381 is a level of support. So you've got 1381 and 1388 out there. You're going to get a monthly TD9 count top, it would appear. In order to do that, price is going to have to close above. And this is at month's end, uh, 1315 out there. So it's got the potential for a top. Not that I see that on the uh, daily, on the weekly time frame out here. So higher or lower, I would use that daily profile, Sandy, to answer that question. I hope I hope that that provided with the information that you were looking for. Jane wrote in, and Jane would like to take a look at Tesla ticker symbol. There, obviously T S L A, and the question was, is where is it headed, and where it's headed? So it's got a beautiful a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. It formed that with that nice bullish engulfing candle. It did that on Tuesday of this week out there. Now, you have price that we formed a new daily profile. We formed that daily profile, and you were wondering, I know, Jane, you were wondering, why did price stop where it did today? And the answer to that question is, whoops, do that. Stevie, pay attention. Uh, uh, what price did today was it ran right into resistance at the top of its profile, and that's at 192.09. So just note that on your pad of paper. The mere fact that we're up at the top, does that mean that the rally is over? It could mean that. Um, it, it, it could mean that we're getting ready for to set up a small A to B equals CD. I just don't know. There's many options here. Uh, let's take a look at volume. The last time that price was up at this level was back on the trading day of January 30th. The volume on that day was 109 million shares. So far today, Tesla has done 43 million shares. That tells me Tesla is pushing into that swing point with volume. So on this way up, it has more volume than it did the last time that it was out there. Um, I, yeah, your, your question is, where is it headed? Right now, because it hasn't broken through there, I'd have to say it's a consolidation with a nice road's momentum indicator bottom, with price consolidated between 181.42 and 192.09. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. You know, it's only fit Super Bowl weekend that we get a call from Robert in Kansas City. Robert, thanks for doing that. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Happy Friday. Yeah, thanks for calling, taking my call, and go Chiefs. Sure, sure. A happy, a happier Friday probably for you. Now, are, are you? Have you been a resident of uh, of the area for a long time? Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd consider it home. I've lived here for over twenty years. So. Okay. Okay. So what's what's the excitement like? You know, this this weekend out there, big parties. Uh, got to be big parties going on. I imagine the stadium oh, will be open too, and they'll, you know, oh, all yeah. kinds of fans. Oh yeah. So before, prior to like the last four or five years, I mean, you know, the Chiefs. I mean, we just we just didn't have that. We didn't have a w winning team, so it's sure. really uh, really the atmosphere and the vibes uh, change. So yeah, it's, it's nice to have a winning thing. team, isn't it? Very it's, positive it's, for the city. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a cool thing. It's an absolutely cool thing, and uh, we've been fortunate down here in Florida to have different teams in a win championship. So it, it's it's certainly a blast, and it is it just kind of pulls the whole you know state together, so to speak, out there. So uh, I wish you luck. Uh, I don't have any uh, skin. Yeah, I don't have any skin in this game. I'm just looking for a really good a really good football game, and and I and I think we'll, I think we'll get one. We should get one. I hope we get one. You bet. You bet. So you're calling about the uh, TLT, basically. So the 30 year Treasury. Um, and tell me what you're trying to do, and you know, are you a, more of an intraday, a more of a swing type? What is it no, that you? I'm not. A, I'm not an intraday. So I called in last week, and I took a long position, and I only held it for a couple of days, and I really don't like doing that. But I you know, started turning some of my stop. Sure. Off. So uh, anyway, I'm glad I'm you not, did I'm, that. I'm glad you I did that. By the my way, my position, and that's and that's that's fine. But uh, if you look at this on like on a daily in a weekly basis. Do you yeah. have a sense on where this is going? I mean, if I look at it on a daily basis, I'm, I'm thinking that it's, um, you know, it looks like it's getting close to support. If I just look at the TLT, and I know you, I know you look at the Treasury that, futures, which that's is fine. I'm going to put well. the TLT up. Yeah, I and get I, the TLT. Oh. Yeah, I'd just like to get your kind of thoughts and analysis on a daily and weekly basis, please. Yeah. Yep, okay. So the TLT, now... With regard to support, Robert, I'm assuming that the support that you're looking at is going to be the bar from January 24th. Um, you know, yeah. prices that that's got volume of 54 million shares. Yesterday, price traded into it with 50 million shares, a little bit more than you'd like, but still lighter. Today, so far, you're at 10 million shares, which is much lighter. That's like a 30, 35 million share a day, likely. Price, uh, and that is a TD9 count bottom. So fine to watch that for sure. I would have shared with you or will share with you that if we just focused on the TLT, didn't look at the 30-year treasury, we would say that price actually closed below support yesterday and is trading below support today. 
And the reason is because we would utilize those market profiles. And those market profiles show that this was a bullish structure profile between 9406 and 9446 out there. So the price would be trading below support. Price is also trading below the support of its weekly profile. So both of those signals suggest that we should head lower, which is really what you were saying. But you were also saying we are headed back towards support. And that is also, I would say, correct because it was that TD9 count bottom and prices coming in there. But it's still below. We don't know if that support level will hold or not. And the only way that or one way that we would look to add additional information that maybe that low is going to hold would be seeing some type of turns on an intraday basis. So, for example, this is a 30 minute time frame chart that we have up on our screen. The 30 minute chart shows both a road. No, it just shows a road momentum indicator bottom pattern. Um, the 30 minute chart, unfortunately, uh, this can't be right. Hold on a minute here. I don't have any profiles. and I know that's not right. So let me just this. Obviously, my template is not correct. So if you give me a moment, I want to be able to give you that data. I don't want to bring up a chart and then not be able to provide you with that short-term data out there. Okay, great. So we got that road momentum indicator bottom. Price is trading with inside a profile. And 94.15 has been that level that price has been uh, struggling to get through. So 94.15. Now, I'm going to look at the ZB, the 30-year uh, the Treasury contract, but I'm going to put this to a 120-minute time frame because it's the 120-minute time frame that we're going to focus in on on the 30-year Treasury, just to be able to provide you with where that real resistance level is. And I, the reason I wanted to put up the 120-minute chart here is to see if we had something similar. We don't, um, and the similar is that price found resistance right at the top of its profile. But before I switch over from TLT, um, uh, is there anything, any other questions that maybe my review uh, created in your mind that we can go back and take a look at? Anything, any, any other questions that you have? No, let's let's look at the, the treasury okay. futures now. Okay, perfect. So remember on the on the daily TLT, that's a bullish structured uh, daily profile out there. I don't recall what it is on the 30 year for its daily time frame, but we're going to find out. And we take a look at it on the 30 year. It is also a bullish structured profile. Now you can see the same TD nine count bottom that it formed, just like the TLT did. Let me pull this back a tad. And so that would tell us that in order for the 30 year treasury to get bearish, so to speak, tell us that it was definitely going to head lower, you need to see it close below that low. That low is 119 even Steven. Because price did close below the bottom of its uh, daily uh, profile yesterday, and it's trading below that again today, it being 119.23, um, we're likely to go test that low. So I think your initial instinct uh, with regard to the TLT, that that is support, I think we're going to see that same thing unfold here. And then likewise, if we get it close below that 119, it's going to set up an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. Now, with regard to like a weekly time frame chart and a monthly time frame chart, are they helping or what are they telling us? The weekly chart is telling you and me it wants to go tag its oscillator and change line. It says it wants to go lower, and so does the monthly time frame. Like the uh, TLT... Go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, go right ahead. You, you said an A, a, B, an a to B, uh, a, B, C, D down. Where would the, the target on that be, Steve? That's that's only if price closes below that TD9 count bottom. But I will give you that target. I'm going to do that off screen uh, just because it's easier for me to do that with that A to B equals C, D tool. And that would get us down to the 117 and change area. So not too much below the 119 area. Um, but that would be the, you know, you'd start looking for then, you'd start looking for a bullish reversal candle to confirm some type of a bottom out here. But right now, I think we have to go with the data that we have. And that data, Robert, suggests a, at least a test of that swing low from the daily time frame from that uh, trading day of, let me see here. I think it was also the same day on the TLT, which would have been January the 25th out there. And not until we see how that test unfolds, we really know which way, which direction, in my opinion, the ZB wants to head. Now, I mentioned the 120-minute time frame chart, and here's what I wanted to show you. This is why I also think that price is going to go lower. If we look at this chart here, this was a key reversal bar. That was a bar that completed at 10 o'clock. It's a key reversal because market was extended. We know it's extended when a road's momentum indicator signal is triggered. I mean, that's a no-brainer there. And a key reversal, you have to exceed the prior bars high and low. It did that. And you have to close in one tick in the opposite direction, which it did. We have a green bar out there. But notice how price found resistance at the top of that profile. That, to the upside, would be the level that I would say, Robert, that if price were to close above that, that would then signal that it's going to head higher. That being 120.13. So to the upside, I'd watch 12013. If that doesn't get taken out, we're likely headed lower. Does that make sense? 
That makes sense. Thank you Perfect. so much. I appreciate it. You You've been. Weekend. I will, and you do the same. And I know the wife is uh, baking a bunch of Super Bowl. Not good for Stevie's diet. Robert, thanks so much for the call. Take care. We'll be right back. think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, uh, folks. Nicholas writes in wants to take a look at AMD. If we take a look at AMD, what do we have out here? We've got a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. That was confirmed a few days ago with this dark cloud cover that was back on February 5th. We have price just consolidating with inside its daily profile. Your support zone is between 153 and 162.31, and your resistance is at 174.72 to 177.78 out there. The weekly chart looks bullish. The monthly chart looks bullish for AMD. So you just got to deal with the uh, uh, with its uh, uh, what looks like mostly a sideways consolidation pattern inside of AMD as we speak right now. But you do have those resistance levels. And you do have a top that is in place. Just support has been broken, so there's no reason to really short AMD, uh, at least as I see it at the moment. Another request from Nicholas was to take a look at uh, Micron. MU was the uh, ticker symbol. We take a look at Micron. What do we have out here? You've got a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. We've got price that did is kind of hovering back and forth. Uh, from its daily profile. This could be the second consecutive session below profile support, which is at 8501. If you get a close below 8501, you probably at least get down to test the low from a couple of days ago. Maybe it says it wants to get back to um, to lower price. 
uh, where would lower price be? So here's another thing I'd look at. On the uh, weekly time frame chart, if price is able to hold the top of his profile at 84, 88, you're at 84, 81, then you can't get too overly bearish about uh, Micron out there because that's the weekly top of its profile. So I think I'd be watching that weekly top of its profile, but closes below that, Micron is likely going to head lower. I'd say the next price target to the downside could be 78.91. That's the center of its bullish structured profile. We've got a request to take a look at light sweep crude. Here's what I can share with you with regard to that, John. And that is that prices trade above yesterday's high. We're inside a bullish structured profile. We closed above it with a wide ranging bar yesterday. It being the center of that profile, price should go target 78.62 out there. I pay attention to your 30 minute time frame, which has a roads momentum indicator top out there. So it closed above today's high is what is going to signal to you that we're headed higher. That roads momentum indicator top took price right back to support the bottom of his profile. So the move lower could easily be over inside of Lightspeed Crude. Uh, folks, uh, thanks so much for joining me. Please have a fabulous weekend. Enjoy the Super Bowl, those of you that are football lovers. And uh, we'll look forward to being back with you on Marvelous Magnificent Monday. Have a fabulous weekend, folks. Take care.